for the quaternion alpha equal to 1 minus i plus j minus k, find the norm of alpha, and find alpha inverse. Then express alpha as a product of a length and a direction. So quaternions. As a set, quaternions are going to be a real four-dimensional vector space. We'll have basis 1, i, j, k. So the general quaternion looks like x plus i, y plus j, z plus k, w, where x, y, z, and w are real numbers. So if you note, we're trying to extend the complex numbers here. We're also going to have a multiplication. So if I tell you how to multiply i, j, k, we'd use that multiplication, extend it to all quaternions. Now, we'll have i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals minus 1. And then if I want to multiply any two of i, j, or k, we're going to load them into the diagram clockwise. And then if I multiply any two going clockwise, we get the third element. If we go counterclockwise, we get the third element, but with a minus sign. So i times j is k, but j times i is minus k. So quaternions are not going to be commutative. We also have a notion of conjugation. Okay, same ideas with the complex numbers. We're going to leave the real part alone. So that's the x. And then the part that's in the span of i, j, and k, we multiply by a minus 1. So x plus i, y plus j, z plus k, w goes to x minus i, y minus j, z minus k, w under conjugation. OK, with conjugation, we have a few formulas. So first, our norm is going to be the distance from our quaternion to the origin. So that's going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared, but it's also equal to alpha times alpha bar. Now, we have alpha times alpha bar equals the norm. So we have alpha times alpha bar over the norm equals 1. So our inverse is going to be alpha bar over the norm. Now I can put numbers to these equations. So for our alpha, the norm is just going to be the sum of x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared. So we're going to get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives me a 4 for our norm. For alpha inverse, we're going to take the conjugate, divide by the norm. So we'll have 1 fourth minus i goes to i, j goes to minus j, minus k goes to k. So for our inverse, we get 1 fourth plus a fourth i minus a fourth j plus a fourth k. For our check, we multiply alpha times alpha inverse. We better get a 1. So we're going to do that on the next board. Next, we're going to express alpha as a product of a length and a direction. Now, here we have another analog to the complex numbers. There, the complex numbers are points in the plane. And then I can go to polar coordinates. And then we think of complex numbers as a product of a length, or modulus, times a point on the unit circle. So we have the same idea here for R4. First. We have our notion of distance from the origin in R4. It's going to be our length. So that's going to be the square root of the norm. Then, if I want to get a direction, it's going to be a unit vector. So in this case, the unit vectors are going to be those vectors with norm equal to 1. As a set, that's going to be the unit 3 sphere in R4. So for our special case, we're going to have the length is going to be equal to the square root of 4, or 2. And then if I want the direction, I take alpha divide by 2. So that's going to give me our decomposition is the length is 2. And then my unit vector is a half minus a half i plus a half j minus a half k. OK, we can check that that's a unit vector by taking the sum of the squares of the coefficients. So that'll give us 4 times 1 fourth. Gives me a 1. So that checks. Let's check that alpha times alpha inverse equals 1. So first thing I can do, I could pull the 1 fourth to the outside. That leaves us with an alpha bar where we had alpha inverse. Now we're going to have four products. I'm going to take each term that's an alpha, hit it against alpha bar. So let's take a look at, for instance, minus i times alpha bar. So minus i times 1 is minus i. Minus i times i is going to give me a minus i squared, or a minus a minus 1, which is a 1. Then we'll have minus i times minus j. 
it's gonna be i times j, and then in order it's i, j, k, so that's just gonna be plus k. And then we have minus i times k, and then note it would be k, i, j, so we get a minus j, but with a minus one in front, so we get a plus j. When we do each of these, collect our terms, we're gonna be left with a four, with a one-fourth out in front, so we wind up getting one and our check works.